So welcome everybody to the Department of Psychiatry's 10th anniversary exhibit of the Bridge Art Gallery. What you just saw was um, our best in show um, artwork from across the years. And so you can see the caliber of the artwork that we've shown at the Bridge Art Gallery. So tonight we're gonna be um, celebrating our 10th anniversary exhibit called Bridging Art and Mental Health and the opening of our second single artist exhibit called A Glimpse into the Engel Doodle Collection. And I'm Caroline Nesho. I work in the Department of Psychiatry in the Office of Diversity, Inclusion, Culture, and Equity, and have been involved with the Bridge Gallery for some time now. So people have asked us, why put a community art gallery in psychiatry? And this was um, a, the brainchild of our former chair, Dr. Eric Kane, who really wanted to make our part of the medical center be a little less stigmatized to walk into. And he wanted to break down the barriers of having community feel comfortable entering our department of psychiatry. So he thought about an art gallery, um, asked me to see if I can get one started. Um, and I am a nurse by training. I am not a person who runs art galleries, uh, but I love art. So um, what I did was to reach out to com community partners for guidance on how to get um, an art gallery started. And our community members, as always, came through and really told us exactly what we needed to do. Uh, to be honest, there was a lot of skepticism in our department about having an art gallery um, in our department hallways, uh, but that quickly turned to enthusiasm um, after the first show was put up. Um, the gallery really um, is kind of the quintessential inclusion vehicle um, that we have in the department. And we really, it's very inclusive in that there are no submission fees for the artists to submit their artwork. In many exhibits, there is a fee to submit your artwork to. We market it very widely across the community, um, across the medical center and the campus, but very widely in the community as well. Our jurying, initially we had the artwork juried by um, experts, which were our community partners. And over the years, we now have Department of Psychiatry members um, jury the artwork. Um, but for this exhibit, we had uh, a special uh, jurors. We had the Medical Center's Aesthetics Committee, as well as the Department of Psychiatry's DICE Board, which is our Diversity, Inclusion, Culture and Equity Board. 
um, jury the artwork. And, and you'll see soon um, who won Best in Show and, and our five jurors picks. Um, we also have had very inclusive receptions. Pre-COVID, we had um, food and uh, uh, lots of people mulling through the um, exhibit space, um, proud artists and their families and friends and coworkers. Um, and we're looking so forward to having a live reception again, because we would be all together tonight um, in person if we were able to do so. The artists who contribute to our gallery are from novices, some people who've never shown their art in an exhibit before, and this is the first time for them, to pro professional artists have um, uh, given their artwork to show in our uh, gallery as well. And then over the years, We've also done community partner exhibits that we do periodically. And some of the community partners, what they do is they organize the artwork, getting the artwork, and, and then we help install it in our gallery. So we've partnered with Willow, Domestic Violence Group, Advocacy Services for Abused Deaf Victims, Racial Justice Initiatives Group at Pediatric Behavioral Health and Wellness, and Stop the Stigma Rock. They're a high school group uh, that we generally give them the spring show every year for the last several years. Um, and this is a piece from one of their shows. So over the years, the Bridge Gallery has expanded. Um, our permanent collection has really grown. Um, our very generous artists, often at the end of an exhibit, will donate their artwork to us. And so that's created our permanent collection, which has allowed us to have satellite galleries now across the Department of Psychiatry in some of our off sites as well. We have a satellite gallery that's beautiful in the ground floor of mental health and wellness, right in uh, on Crittenden Boulevard, right at the Medical Center. We have some satellite galleries at um, EAP and Behavioral Health Partners. And we are now also creating one over at Strong Minds, our newest off site at Chestnut Street. About, uh, I think it was in 2015, we expanded the gallery space even further to create a single artist space. Um, and we just took down Charmaine, Charmaine Wheatley, who is our medical center's resident artist, her portraits that we had up there for several years. And it's sad to see them come down, but what we've put in their place is uh, Dr. George Engel's doodles, which you're gonna hear a lot more about. And that just got hung today. This is just a picture of what we should be doing tonight, and that would be eating together and um, being together. This is how our receptions typically are, a little awkward in our hallways, but uh, we have lots of food, and hopefully our next show we'll be doing, uh, we'll be doing that once again. Let's see. Um, the Bridge Art Gallery is run by Amanda Lai. She is an arts, our arts and communication specialist, and you'll hear from her shortly, but she does the bulk of the work. But there are many people to thank for um, both exhibits tonight, especially the Engel Doodle exhibit that we'll be talking about. Zena Schuber, who is our Director of Community Engagement, she has been an engine behind the, the Engel Doodle exhibit in particular. Tony Redden and his team, um, our facilities team, uh, they have been incredible. They installed the show pretty much today, the Angle Doodle Show. Our psych tech group, um, that's Carrie Heinemann, Steve Fasone, and Brian Chang. Our student employees, Shania Davis, Megan Brown, um, uh, Julie Choi. Our Bridge Gallery artists, of course, need to be thanked. Sydney Lee, um, who is the daughter of uh, Renee Simone Lee, uh, who we have many of her paintings up in our gallery for this exhibit, thanks to Sydney. Um, and then I already thanked the Aesthetics Committee and the Dice Board. And then, of course, we need to thank um, the chair of our department, Dr. Ben Lee, um, who has been an ardent supporter of the Bridge Art Gallery for his tenure so far in, as, as our chair. And he has really been the initial engine behind sharing the angle doodles with the world. Um, so now Dr. Lee is gonna join us to speak about Dr. George Engel and how this um, exhibit came to be. Thank you, Caroline, for the wonderful introduction. You're so kind. Uh, I, I, I'm Ben Lee, so I'm the chair of the department and I'm very honored to be a part of the 10th year uh, celebration of the Bridge Art Gallery. 
I'm particularly excited about this year's celebration because this falls upon our 75th anniversary of the department. Uh, so in recognition of this double anniversary year, I'm very pleased to see that I, our DICE team led by Amanda and, and Caroline and Zina and everybody decided to digitize all the anger doodles uh, uh, the, the, you know, these doodles are done by the, the very founder of our department, George Anger, who came to Rochester with John Romano, our first chair of the department in 1947, which makes our 75th anniversary and started our department. So in many ways, this is a very special occasion. After they arrived in 1947, over the next several decades, uh, uh, Joel Zenger, in collaboration with John Romano, developed this biopsychosocial model that a lot of people talk about around University of Rochester, but beyond. In fact, it is the most dominant model uh, uh, theory behind psychiatry. But it, it's also beginning to have a profound impact, not only in psychiatry, but also outside of psychiatry as well, as we talk about person-based cares and, and, and value-based care. The idea of biopsychosocial model is so humanistic, if you think about it. Uh, it's the idea that our patient experience is shaped not only by biological and biomedical issues, but also by uh, social and psychological issues. And uh, these thoughts, which seem like a common sense by now, are even more impactful and poignant in this time of COVID epidemic. And, uh, you know, just to give you a perspective on how this anger do the, uh, uh, I, I came across and I began to be, a, you know, the full supporter of this is that, you know, I, I've been a chair. I came to University of Rochester about four, four years ago. And one day uh, when I became a chair, a few days after that, Susan McDaniel, uh, at that time, director of Institute for Family, uh, came by my office and gave me a gift. Uh, it was an anger to the frame. And, and let me actually, I can probably show you by sharing the screen. And uh, it's, it's this one. And, and this picture meant a lot to me. And it's, it looks like somebody who is either evolving or devolving over the time. And uh, as someone who's just stepping into this role of a chair, that meant a lot. And, 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 it, and I placed it in my office and time to time I would look at it. And, and it made me kind of think about where am I going? Why am I here? So it meant a lot. I liked this so much that I began to collect them and look for where the pictures are. And I found a whole bunch of them and there are a couple of boxfuls of them. So I eventually uh, asked people to make a collage out of it, which, which is this, and this is right now. Uh, you can see it in my background as well as, uh, this is the, uh, the collage that's in my, uh, in my office as well. And out of those things, I, uh, I very much uh, began to really think about how we can share more of these collage. And, uh, uh, and, and we have now digitized them. And, and, and now they are displayed in our hallway that you can see that that I'm very excited to see them and I hope they bring you smile as they have uh, brought me smiles over the many years. Um, before I, I, I talk too much and then belabor these things, let me also end by introducing you to Dr. Peter Engel, uh, Dr. George Engel's son, who is also a, uh, a, a very a distinguished geriatrician career uh, uh, until he retired a few years ago. But Dr. Peter Engel has taped a video for us as an introduction to his father, George Engel, 
his duders. And uh, he will talk about how these duders were also a labor of love. And I also have a picture, by the way, of, uh, of Dr. George Anger and his wife who were uh, drawing together. The many of these pictures were obviously drawn by Dr. Anger, but also colored by his wife, uh, Evelyn Anger, who was also a medical illustrator. So let me show you that uh, picture. And here they are, as uh, uh, this is a, a portrait that he was, uh, she was drawing, and there's Dr. George Anger. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm very grateful for Dr. Peter Anger's time. And he'll talk about now how these doodles uh, were part of their life. And uh, I hope you enjoy the video as well as the rest of a celebration. Thank you. Hey, hello. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Peter Engel. I'm son of Dr. George Engel and delighted to be at the opening of this wonderful display of his doodles, which he produced prolifically for many years. Uh, most of the time uh, after I was out of the house, I left uh, the house for college at age 18. That was in 1961. Are there any doodles that stand out in your head? Well, I, I'd, have, I'd have to say no, uh, because the, the, the doodle figures, uh, which are kind of these, these cute uh, characters of uh, various sorts, um, are difficult to translate into uh, a, a, a description in words. Uh, so, so there's no specific doodle that stands out. It's all like one doodle and all of the others are the same. It's sort of this generic, engaging, this is my dad's uh, creative, subconscious production of entertaining and interesting figures. Uh, that's been enhanced and, uh, and described uh, in collaboration with my mother. I remember my father getting into uh, doodling in earnest uh, when he was bored at uh, committee meetings. Uh, and I was not at the meetings, I was a little kid. Uh, but he initially started to doodle uh, on a uh, yellow lined paper uh, in uh, prolific, uh, in prolific uh, quantities all around the margins of uh, the notes he was producing uh, uh, during the meetings. Uh, he'd bring these home. They were pretty interesting visually and entertaining. Uh, he was also uh, uh, attending the Chicago Psychoanalytic Institute at the time, uh, learning to become a a psychoanalyst uh, with, a, with his background actually in internal medicine, uh, so that it's very likely that psychoanalytic theory played a uh, great role in the content of the doodles. Uh, psychoanalytic theory also played a great role in our dinner table discussions, probably more than uh, uh, most people would want to hear about psychoanalytic theory. So after uh, some years, uh, my mother became involved uh, in uh, enhancing the doodles and uh, my dad uh, transferred uh, his doodle production uh, from uh, yellow line pads to uh, eight and a half by 11 uh, white paper and would actually produce a single doodle on one uh, sheet of paper. Uh, he and perhaps my mother would color them in to make them more interesting. And then they would collaborate on inventing uh, captions for the doodles. So the doodles then became cartoons, which greatly entertained them and then in, in, uh, came to entertain an increasing number of uh, uh, visitors to our house where my mother, uh, who is an artist, in fact, she's a trained medical illustrator, uh, completed the doodles, framed them, 
uh, and had a series of doodles uh, going up and down the stairways of uh, our house on San Gabriel Drive in Rochester. So I have sort of a general memory of these doodles and how uh, entertaining they, they can be and how uh, people were so engaged and entertained by them. Uh, and I hope uh, people looking at the exhibit, everybody who has a chance to take a look at it, uh, finds it engaging and entertaining as well. Uh, anybody who discovers the key to my dad's uh, subconscious, as revealed in these illustrations, uh, please text or email me with your, uh, with your interpretation. Thank you so much for including me as part of the 75th anniversary festivities. Uh, please enjoy the uh, exhibits and congratulations to the Department of uh, Psychiatry and its achievements. And now you'll see a glimpse into the angle doodle exhibit that is in the South Corridor. Thank you for the introductions, everyone. My name is Amanda Lai. I am the Arts and Communication Specialist in the Department of Psychiatry. Um, I'll be introducing the artwork um, in our 10 year anniversary exhibition, uh, which is titled Celebrating 10 Years of Bridging Art and Mental Health. The exhibition is currently installed in our UR Medicine Mental Health and Wellness Wing, which is on the first floor of Strong Memorial Hospital. There we go. Uh, this show is especially special, not because it celebrates our gallery's 10th year, but because it revolves around our community artists and community partners who have helped to make the gallery what it is today. And here's just a view of the gallery. So I'll actually start with a special collection of paintings by longtime Bridge Art Gallery artist, Renee Simone Lee. Renee has been a integral part of the gallery's development in its early days. And we're grateful to your family for allowing us to show this selection of her paintings. So all her uh, paintings are original oil, uh, paintings. Um, 
Renee Simone Lee, uh, 1959 to 2017, was a imaginative painter driven by an incredible passion for self-expression through art. Oops. So I'll just go through a few of Renee Simone Lee's paintings that um, we had missed before. Uh, this one is called Autumn Woods. This one is Mount Rainier Falls. This is Zion. So a native of Utica, uh, New York, Renee was always happiest with a pencil in hand. She followed her passion and studied studio art at Nazareth College in Rochester, New York with concentrations in drawing, printmaking and ceramics. It wasn't until 2009 that Renee began oil painting and quickly carved out a niche for herself in the Rochester arts community. She touched the lives of many with her vibrant landscape paintings inspired by her travels. Her talents were recognized in regional and national shows, including the Louis D. Demanda a Memorial Award in the 2013 Rochester Finger Lakes Exhibition. And sadly, Renee passed away in September 2017 from terminal brain cancer, but her legacy will live on through her paintings and through the Renee Simone Lee Arts Scholarship at Nazareth College. And I'll just go through a few more of her paintings. Um, and I just want to give a big thank you again to Renee's family for their support of the gallery. Uh, we're really grateful for her family for allowing us to show the selection of her paintings. So I will also get, uh, I will also introduce uh, other artworks uh, by our community artists currently showing in this exhibition. And I will start with uh, the following three paintings or four paintings, I'm sorry, by Annie Austin. These are all completed in acrylic. Uh, this first piece is called Angel. This uh, next piece is titled A Vase Full of Spring. This piece is titled Just Smile. And lastly, uh, this piece is untitled, also completed in acrylic. Our next artist is Peter Blackwood. Uh, Peter says, I am a nature and landscape photographic artist based in Canandaigua, New York. Ten years ago, I retired from my long-standing position in inpatient psychiatric nurse here uh, at Strong Memorial Hospital to pursue a wide variety of photographic interests with a central focus of capturing the beauty of the natural world. My website is www.blackwoodphoto.com. For the current exhibition, Bridging Art and Mental Health, I have focused on an important component of mental health, relationships. Each image represents a relationship between two beings for mutual support. The first of Peter's pieces uh, is titled Always Stronger Together uh, in photography. He describes the uh, artwork as image one is stronger together and depicts two shadows holding hands with the ocean in the distance. This one is personal as I have a stronger together marriage of 49 years. Uh, image two is love conquers all depicting the support of relationships, even in the animal kingdom. Swans are usually together for a lifetime. Uh, 
Image three is titled Mother Love, a mother and child goal, realizing the importance of their bond. Image four is eye to eye, a self-portrait with a buddy showing the bond we make even with our pets. And lastly, Peter uh, closes out um, his artwork with saying, with re reminding us that relationships are always important in the world. Next, I want to introduce this uh, painting on a poster board by Grace Prasitsky, titled Inside Out. Describing the artwork, Grace says, there's always two sides to one story. Which will you choose? This painting is by Mar Maria Brzezinski, titled Perseverance. It's completed in watercolor and acrylic paint on a flat canvas. And in creating this artwork, Maria says, my piece represents that there is always hope and that we must always keep on moving. Next, I want to introduce the artwork of longtime artist Lorelai Heliotis. Um, she describes her artist statement as digital altering and enhancements of my photographs is my method of artistic expression. I bring out unique aspects of the image and strive to invoke curiosity reflect a memory, create an emotional connection, or any combination of these. Her first piece titled Delta uh, is a digital artwork. She says, I named this art piece Delta because it reminds me of the fear, loss, and devastation we have experienced since COVID-19 became a part of our lives. Mostly though, this artwork is in honor of the nurses who have worked so hard and have given so much and have come face to face with the lives lost, the families devastated, as well as the battles won, though not without great trauma and sacrifice. Thank you so much for your courage. The second piece by Lorelei is called Pegasus Cruiser. It's also a digital piece. She says, this piece began with a photograph of our horse cruiser 10 years ago during the first Bridge Art Gallery exhibition. Another piece that originated with cruiser was shown. We lost cruiser in 2019. He was our family's Pegasus. This one's for you, sweetie pie. When I remember you, I still think I can fly. I hope we made you feel the same way. This next piece is by John Kosboff, titled An Abundance of Limitations, also digital. For his artist statement, John simply said, born naked, screaming without a clue, now occasionally naked, still clueless, screaming through art. For his description of the piece, he simply wanted us to read the words of his artwork. On my side, on the floor, in the sunlight blocks, listening to the shadows, sliding through the light, nudging dust and nascent awareness into limitations, old tendencies, moments, emotional landscapes. Our next two pieces are by an anonymous artist. Um, first one is a digital print uh, titled Looking for You in That Summer. Um, and the second piece uh, is titled um, Trapped in Body. Artist says, my artwork touches upon topics such as memory and the boundary between the intrapersonal and the interpersonal. 
The creation of Trapped in Body was a result of tackling my own sense of dysphoria. Uh, I'm also will introduce uh, the artworks of Gina McMahon. Uh, the first piece is titled Heaven, uh, created in watercolor. Uh, the next piece uh, is a pastel on paper uh, artwork uh, entitled Fractured. And her last piece uh, is an untitled piece uh, created with pastel on paper. I also am going to introduce uh, our longtime artist, Katachu Te. Uh, born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Um, after high school, I attended the Addis Ababa Fine Arts School and graduated with a BA in graphic art design. After graduation, I worked in the Ethiopian Air Force as a designer and then received a scholarship to the former Soviet Union where I earned a master's degree in printmaking from the Ukrainian Ac Academy of Fine Arts in Kiev. I've been interested in art and artists my entire life. As a child, I used to paint flowers in Ethiopia. There is a tradition on New Year's Day, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try my best with this pronunciation, uh, Anku Tatash, where boys paint flowers and girls sing a song about flowers, Abe Baye Hoy. Constant encouragement from family and friends helped me to learn more about art. I'm interested in finding and collecting different things. The desire to know many techniques keeps my mind fresh. My brain is constantly fascinated by new ideas. I'm trying to connect my oscillating ideas and paint my swinging thoughts. The thing I see as images in my mind are a result of different life experiences. These thoughts or imagining enable me to create a very colorful picture. The love of my wife, the love of my wife, Deborah, is also my great inspiration. And here is Katacho's uh, piece, Caring, Healing, and Creativity, uh, a mixed media art piece. I'll also introduce the work of Pradeep Kumar Sal. Um, his works are all acrylic paintings. And speaking on his works, he says, man tries to maintain his existence by sticking to material aspects of life. On the other hand, he ignores his mere physical existence only to attain something beyond his material longings. He tries to tear asunder the hard realities of life. He begins to dream, the kind of dream that tries to touch the infinite. The color of man's dream is blue. Dream tries to get to the sky, which is infinite, vast, and immense. That which is infinite and immense expresses itself in blue. And these are actually all part of a triptych um, entitled Desire. Like I mentioned, all are acrylic paintings on canvas. Next, I'm going to introduce uh, Karen Staples, um, Karen's artwork, and Karen's artwork, Bridging the Divide of Mental Healthiness. This acrylic landscape illustrates how an unhealthy mental state affects one's entire being and the entire environment. When the resources are reached out to and accepted by the broken, a healthier, stronger, more vibrant you flourishes and nourishes those around you. Notice the size of the trunks to the shape of the limbs. Notice the central resources, how varied and inclusive it oozes. Notice the blue sky or blue water everywhere. That could be seen by all, but interpreted so differently based on your perspective. Is it the blue of depression or the brilliance of a cool summer evening quenching one's thirst? And a bit 
about this artwork as well as about Karen. This 18 inch by 20 inch acrylic landscape is painted on a foam board. The first three layers are gesso applied by a palette knife in alternating application directions and dried by a heat gun after each layer. She says, the next day I applied the watered down, oof, trying to pronounce this word as well, phytocyanine blue, maybe, <laughs> with a palette knife. I love the textures so much that I left it as is and didn't add foam or clouds to the waves. I like that the blue can be interpreted in numerous ways. The following day, I created the trees with two different fan brushes. I mixed all the colors with Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. The last day, I sprayed an acrylic clear gloss coat to help liven up the dried out blue. There's a blob above one of the little trees. I see that as those times when you feel like something's hanging over you, it's like something's about to drop on you. One other note I scribbled down while I was painting, through the chaos of life, it's sometimes hard to see the positive details and intricacies of our own unique lives. And a bit about Karen. Karen R. Staples' favorite medium is acrylic landscape paintings. Recently, she has been doing more faith-based creations, creative experimental pieces, and meditative labyrinths. Expressing artistically ways to heal mental health issues that friends are dealing with, is also helping heal the unenlightened. Reach out to someone today. Next, I'm going to introduce the works of Mohammed Dreza Shivani Zeda. Uh, their first work, The Fourth Wall, is completed in acrylic. Speaking on this art piece, they say, my strokes of color in my artwork, as well as selected and arrangement of elements in it were created based on my artistic experience from adolescence to the present. For their next piece, Cater, they say, Iranian painting has expressive and exciting features. Although it has an imaginative spirit, I try to show these two in my artwork and both pieces are acrylic. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce uh, Jim Sturdevant. Um, he has three pieces uh, created with pencil on paper. This first one, The Lord's Contemplation. Uh, he says, my name is James Thomas Sturdevant. I have lived in Rochester, New York all my life. I believe in my ability to create beautiful works of art. I call my style surrenderism because I surrender my work to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He has truly blessed me with his mindset and I'm a grateful artist and man because of his grace. Uh, his next piece is titled Women in Ancient City. Uh, and his last piece is titled Messiah in the Wilderness. Uh, this piece is an untitled piece by artist Katie Virag. Uh, it's a collage piece, uh, including scanned 35 millimeter photo printed on inkjet uh, transparent sheet. sheet. Uh, Katie Virag earned a BFA in sculpture and a BS in psychology from Louisiana State University in 2013, and an MFA in studio arts from Syracuse University in 2021. Her work, which has been exhibited nationally, is concerned with the psychological antithesis of the mental state of disassociation, comfort versus discomfort, safety versus danger, and reality versus non-reality. She currently splits her time between Buffalo, New York, where she has a studio at Buffalo Art Studio and Syracuse. And lastly, uh, we'll introduce uh, this art piece by Kevin Yost. Um, 
also a very long time artist with our gallery. Um, this piece is a mixed media on paper piece and is entitled Amanda, Charmaine, and Jenny. So within our last few minutes, well, actually I did a little bit better on time than I thought, <laughs> but um, I will introduce our awards for our best in show and top jurors picks. For those unfamiliar with our jurying process, every show we invite our department of psychiatry colleagues to walk through the gallery and select their top six pieces, after which we tally their choices to select our best in show and top jurors picks. So without further ado, our best in show for our anniversary exhibition, celebrating 10 years of bridging art and mental health is There for Each Other by Peter Blackwood. Thank you again to Peter for all his years of support of our gallery. We also have five top jurors picks and I will go through and introduce each of them. Our first two top jurors picks are actually both by the same artist. So please join us in congratulating Lorelai Heliotis for her pieces Pegasus Cruiser and Delta uh, being selected as top jurors picks. Our next top jurors picks is by Pradeep Kumar Sao, um, his third piece Desire, um, acrylic on canvas. Our next top jurors pick is Cater by Mohamed Reza Shivani Zeda. Our next jurors pick is A Vase Full of Spring by Annie Austin. And last but certainly not least, our next jurors, our last jurors pick is Caring, Healing, and Creativity by Katachio Te. So that's about it for me. <laughs> thank you so much, Amanda. Um, and thank you everybody for joining us for this exhibit. Please, when, we, when you can, uh, and when we're allowed to have people come into the hospital, please come and see these pieces in person. They are, they are beautifully vibrant here, but in person, they're just wonderful. Um, and it's right on the first floor of psychiatry. Um, and you just walk that hallway and you'll be able to see both exhibits uh, displayed. They'll be up for how long, Amanda? Probably until April? Yes, typically we will switch out shows every three to four months, which would make it sometime during the spring. So I'm assuming April. So by then, I'm hopeful that uh, we will be able to open the hallways again for people to come and see the artwork in person. Any last words, Amanda? I just want to thank everyone that is attending and I see a few people on Facebook Live as well. Uh, so just thank you to all those that attended our reception tonight. Thank you to our community artists uh, for their many years of support. Um, and a big thank you to everyone um, that made this exhibition possible. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you so much.